I'm so happy to have you both here because you're both writers and, and also in publishing and so on, but that's only an excuse, I think. One is in, in fashion or the, in architecture. But I feel um, that we have to discuss out of fashion weeks and out of fashion design weeks, and how life is now and how we are enjoying life and what is actually the main purpose of our living today, because I think we have so much more to say than we did in the past. It is a critical container, so you have to be critical and you are the critic Angelo of fashion. So uh, you have the pen uh, <laughs> with full of spirit and uh, critique. And um, I want to start with you, Angelo. How are you feeling yes. today and, and how is life without all those travelings and, and horrible fashion weeks, if I might say? Oh, I have to say that I've, I've been uh, mumbling on this uh, all along these months. I was uh, writing a lot about how sometimes unnecessary some fashion travels seem to be to the system and to the whole ecosystem of fashion. Sometimes it was just a display of wealth from the fashion houses. I was just reflecting that exactly one year ago, I took my last uh, intercontinental flight to Miami, where mm. I attended both uh, Design Miami and the Dior home uh, fashion show. And at the time, I mean, we didn't have any idea of what was going yeah. to happen in just a couple of months. And it mm -hmm. was like, OK, we are just traveling to another end of the world for another show. Mm -hmm. But and in fact, I think that that whole system was a little bit redundant. It was just a uh, display from the big groups of how big budgets they had. But for me, as a writer and as a critic, I, I reflected on how I greatly enjoy traveling because I, apart from the show that you're attending, you're coming into contact with, with other realities, with other ways to use clothing or uh, to see fashion and to live in general. So I, right now I'm missing my work done on the road in the sense that I miss witnessing something live because actually, as a fashion critic, I always say that uh, I'm, it's a bit like uh, art critic mixed with theater or cinema critic, because you're not just judging the manufacture, the clothing. You're, ju you're judging basically the whole performance, the whole thing. And sometimes the narrative comes mo nowadays more than in the past the, from the package more than the clothing. So I miss that part, but I know that when we are going back to normal, if there is something normal, it won't be the same thing. Something will yeah. change. For the moment, I'm very worried because what I see is that the big groups are getting bigger and more powerful than ever. Yeah. And the whole thing that is happening is just putting the small brands into the corner. They are either or super smart and come with some genius idea with zero budget, or they're just being swallowed up by the big brands. I mean, what we're seeing tonight uh, after this conversation, like uh, I have the Chanel show and they are broadcasting their Metier d'Art collection. And then yeah. there is Dior in a few days and uh, Balenciaga on Sunday. I mean, the big groups are doing whatever they like, whenever they like. Gucci did the TV program two weeks ago. But the small, because a fashion week is also an ecosystem that supports the small through the big. Because when we are in Paris for 10 days, you mm -hmm. attend Chanel, Vuitton and Balenciaga and whatever else. But you also see the big, the, the smaller shows that sometimes are the most interesting shows in between. If the whole ecosystem of a fashion week disgregates into something I do whenever I please, however I please, how will the smaller brands survive? How will the young up and coming designer have an opportunity to show to the fashion system in, in the peak moment of fashion. And also the thing that I really miss is the interaction with my colleagues. Because uh, uh, I don't have the English word, it's like the study generale of fashion when you go to Fashion Week. So basically, Linda, I started talking to you because I saw you at the Y Project show or at Raf Simon's show. Otherwise, it was always very formal. You, you just say hi, but then once you sit one next to the other and you just start chatting and it's very fluid and very democratic. All of a sudden, hierarchies collapse and you can talk with wh whoever you like and have uh, an interesting conversation. 
And that I miss a lot because basically I am alone in front of or the phone or, a com or the computer. I see. Is that the same for you, Anna? Uh, do you miss also your uh, the architect around you, the performances uh, where you write about the books, you're editing? How do you feel today? Is it also a lonely feeling? You know, that's interesting uh, in the sense that on one hand, that was not a huge change for me in the sense that I always have been a dedicated remote worker. <laughs> By the nature of what I do, I kind of, I really celebrated this time alone when you really can concentrate, when you, you, you invent your own schedule, when you're not dependent on that. On, uh, on, on the other hand, Mm. I would say yes, definitely. I, I I miss this possibility to just you know book a ticket and go somewhere, and meet people in real life, and go to see uh, an, an exhibition, a biennale, to just to see people. Like the, the moment it becomes, there is a tiny door that is being opened. I immediately do that, like in in the middle of the summer. But other than that, to me, it was a good moment for kind of really. Uh, as banal as it sounds, introspection, like really trying to figure out what it is that I want to focus on, what it is that I want to say, what's what's important, and really go go for it. So then, okay, thanks Zoom and all of those other uh, uh, means of uh, teleconnection, and the fact that most of my, if not all of my closest friends, in any case, live in other countries, like all over the world, but somehow in other countries, it was just the continuation of a, an evolution of a certain situation for me and a moment to, to really look into, to, to, to focus on important things, let's say. Anna, did you have, a, a, I mean, was it, 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 was it natural for you to focus on the important things or this, because I completely understand you because I've been a dedicated remote worker all mm. my life too, basically we work, who works as a freelancer as a, his own schedule. We can work on week, uh, weekdays, uh, on weekends. We have no time uh, early morning, whenever the, mm. we want. But I found a little bit hard sometimes to focus in these months because this kind of vacuum that was created mm -hmm. all around me was in the beginning, it seems to help introspection, mm -hmm. but at one point introspection turned into anxiety for me hmm. i'm not there yet <laughs> but, <laughs> but i'm I not there yet either no mm -hmm. yeah no the thing is uh, that what's uh, what's interesting to me is this uh quality of time that has changed in my mind it has somehow st not stopped but the the pace of time is different this year mm -hmm. and on, on one hand you go somewhere in june and you have the feeling that it's still early March, because <laughs> you haven't felt this, you know, yes, passing of true, time. True. On the other hand, we're already in December, and the kind of you feel really acutely now how this inner sense of time and outer sense of time are in totally Completely. parallel worlds, you know. <laughs> and that's uh, that that that, it, that by no means <laughs> answers your question, but <laughs> but that's what it. kind of you you, st you start thinking about. Yes. And then from there and from all those kind of focusing on the things uh, like what's important to me, you start kind of, you know, finding in, in YouTube and in other, you know, places like things about the nature of time and you somehow mm -hmm. start, start looking into that. And strangely, this becomes very resonant with what I'm kind of thinking about professionally with building up my kind of cross disciplinarity course. So, Yes, for me, it has really been a moment of, you know, unplugging from certain things to, you know, so I'm, I'm not into the anxiety phase yet. But I have to say that, uh, Linda, my anxiety uh, moment came mm -hmm. mostly on a professional level because when this whole thing started, it seems like it, it could shake the system from the foundations really hardly. And then what I've seen along the months is that the the big monsters, let's call them like this, are getting bigger and bigger, you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, like a Goliath. 
and the smaller are like being so i i think that the we call in, in italian we say bonismo you know when everybody was was trying was trying to feel super good and mm. like uh, showing where the fashion system was actually a system so a, a place where the big and the small come together and everybody helps the other and now it's just like we do i mean i save myself and that's it every brand mm. is trying to you know eat their plate and don't care about the rest and that may put me in a very not in a negative mood because i'm not a negative person but it makes me think a lot of how a sense of community is lacking at the moment and was there a sense of community before in your no, mind no mm -hmm. there were, actually there was not but I, there was a brief moment at the starting of all this that i thought okay maybe this is going to be to evolve for the good mm. And then, I, I mean, what I see now, what really shocks me is how much the big brands are uh, showing off what they can do sometimes, even with the, uh, you know, uh, I mean, they spend a lot. Linda, can we say names and things or not? Of course. I mean, okay. afterwards, there is an editing, it goes live. Okay. So it's up to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, I was really shocked by, by, by how Gucci approached an idea that was on paper very interesting. So a brand becomes like a broadcasting company and they produce not, not just the imagery, but the narratives that go with the imagery in a film format. And you involve a cult uh, director like Gus Van Sant. Mm. And then what comes out of this is like a very silly uh, kind of uh, uh, movie in which nothing happens. It's basically a catalog. And it's studded with stars from different uh, milieus, like uh, art critic, uh, theater actress, and blah, blah, blah. But nothing sticks together. And basically, for me, it was a waste of ideas and money. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, and of course, also, there is the aggressiveness of the houses because they don't like to be criticized nobody likes to be criticized anymore in fact this is one of the reasons i'm, I'm really happy about this talk with anna because mm -hmm. i i think that over the years the meaning of criticism in design or in fashion has been completely lost so if you write a critique everybody thinks you're just attacking we're not as a critics we are not attacking a brand or a designer we're just showing what in our opinion, because that always stays like big, no? Uh, it's, 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 uh, I mean, is we are, are uh, analyzing a project from the weak and the strong points, no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm strange. I, I feel immediately back again in the system, uh, to, uh, listening to you. Personally, I can afford it to step out because it's mm. my life is different. And I'm discovering a kind of new parallel world of young designers mm. and people who are really um, enthusiastic. I feel suddenly listening to you back in January, you know? Yes, you're <laughs> and, right. You're right. You're and right. I feel a bit strange about that. You're and, right. Maybe it's me that I'm stuck in there. Yeah. I don't know. I'm a bit lost. No, I maybe mean, it's it, just the idea of two parallel systems being created. Well, one system that existed for more or less mm -hmm. forever. The yes. one Angela is talking about and which is probably, well, uh, not going anywhere anytime no, soon. But yes. <laughs> On the other hand, uh, there is an understanding that there will be no help from there. So a parallel system should be built. What yes. are the tools we have and how it can be built is the question. Mm -hmm. I think there is there was always mm -hmm. a parallel system mm -hmm. because people were always working mm -hmm. hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of designers and and people are working together mm -hmm. artists and they call themselves art directors now and curators so there is a lot of uh, hybrid situations where people yes. are very creative in the fashion field mm -hmm. and I don't think that designers are still interesting in doing what they do and Absolutely. I stepped a little bit out in January the, when I left when I unpacked my luggage the 23rd of February and decided not to go to Paris I stepped out and and I feel much better that I of course I'm talking to my friends but 
lately it was running and am, am i on the first row the second row am i yes. in do i have a ticket am i going to balenciaga mm. there in the middle of nowhere no i'm i'm not doing that anymore and i can afford that for myself so uh, i'm a lucky person so i'm looking for new energies in different cities and different uh, communities and i must and say I, I once in a while find that hmm. and i think that new energy can come from no money because i think yes. that money sucks away most of the big and the good energy because it becomes you know a rush to uh, make more money I was just yesterday before leaving, I just got my copy of System magazine. And there is a long story on Mark Lebon, the photographer who created Crunch, that kind of collective. And I've always been hyper fascinated by this kind of uh, uh, creative uh, crossroads where people of different, uh, from dis different disciplines meet just to create things, not to make money, not to conquer the world. I think that the system that is now collapsing is the idea that you should uh, be at the helm of a fashion house to conquer the world and make all the money you can. That is so disgusting and odd looking at the moment. I, I agree. Mean, I and they're waiting for a small brand to buy because there is money there, there is money there. And before all the brands were already bankrupt, many. Yes, absolutely. So Absolutely. So the, the insanity is really high at this level, and yes. I think we we should step out and and or we are today speaking about the critical container. I think we can speak critically about what's going on today and and help a bit the the other side of the neighborhood, people who are working here and there, connecting with them. And so I think we have a new message there, a new a kind of new um, responsibility. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Is that the same in design, uh, Anna, and in architecture? Because it, I feel you are doing a lot of work with um, new architect projects. Talk a bit about that. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't even know where to start from this point of view, because, of course, the system is uh, different. Uh, in the, the whole kind of the whole structure is of course different yes and uh, the, the architects are more independent on one hand and well on, on the, more dependent on the other but um, oh really where to start i'm kind of um, i think the, the the important thing now is that uh the role we're now seeing that the role of the architect can change and it changes gradually. And the kind of the, the way an architect can understand themselves within a larger, let's say, ecosystem, which he not just he not just provides a design of a building, but he kind of creates conditions for some future situations to, to happen. And an architect is someone who is kind of positions themselves uh, by, by nature of his profession in the center of different interests because you have for instance i don't know the client the community the city the users uh the past the future the present a lot of a lot of kind of interests a lot of people and different groups of people and a lot of conditions involved within one emerging situation and it is your position as an architect to bring those interests together to find those kind of fields of connection where these things can connect because sometimes those different groups don't even have a language to listen to each other, uh, to, to, to understand each other uh, because they really speak different languages, uh, not in linguistic sense, but kind of in, uh, well, you, you know what I mean? So kind of the architect is positioned such that, th that they can, find those intersections and articulate them into, uh, into not even a building, but a situation, a built situation, a materialized situation that will enable a certain evolution, how it will evolve in time, how it will respond to the current users, but how it will also respond to the changing situation. So uh, there, there are, I think there is a lot of change in at least, uh, it's not maybe what is happening for everyone in architecture, but this is what is happening. And some of the big architecture competitions, which we are seeing now, uh, 
like the C40 Reinventing Cities competition, for instance, is kind of trying to look in this direction by bringing together those teams where different experts and communities and architects and the architects who are being the drivers of the project trying to not just understand the context but bring together the people the different experts the different actors who will contribute to the context kind of not just creates a building but creates creates a condition and a situation that's i think something extremely interesting could it be copied to the fashion industry question oh. well angelo what do you think could um. it be Oh, that could be very interesting. That could be very interesting. Who could be a central conceptor uh, who kind of, on one hand, has their own creative ego, of course, but on the other hand, thinks how this can be amplified, the final result amplified in cooperation with those people and those people and like looking in very different directions and listening to everyone in order to understand what they want and see how to connect this but not exploit them which no. is which is a very mm -hmm. normal fashion attitude exploiting the other mm -hmm. interlocutors you know mm -hmm. you you because i mean nobody believes that uh, in any create no creative industry is made just by one person no sure. yeah. dialogues mm -hmm. are important but the narrative of the ego is central to fashion mm -hmm. and so all the dialogues are the, in somehow exploited in the name of the big ego so i think that if a shattering of the ego happens it could be an, a very interesting aspect for fashion hmm. and i was very taken linda when you sent us the the notes before this conversation because you were right you were comparing uh, criticism to poetry in a way yes and I wanted I to come to that, yeah. Mm. I completely feel that because I think that what has, for me, created a kind of distance for, to, from the system of fashion today is the lack of soul. Because everything has become so uh, focused on money making and fame making and selling, selling, selling for the sake of selling as much as you can that the soul behind I mean, there are a few projects that have a soul behind them, but there are just really a handful. And by and you, it, it's very interesting that you talked about poetry because there is a way to criticism. Basically, means to deconstruct an idea, look at it from every angle, and uh, explain that to the public. And you can do that with a poetic tone instead of a harsh or analytic or dry tone that which is honestly my goal as a writer mm -hmm. because i for me things that really speak to me really create an emotion i mean I might, I might sound a little bit naive in this sense but for me it's very important to get an emotion from things that i see that i witness it would be it a performance or a building or a piece of clothing and i've always it's always my aim to convey that to the public. Also because uh, I think that the, the, another important aspect, and I don't know, Anna, if you agree with me, is that sometimes, I mean, being a critic is a very um, uh, hard position because if you are too harsh and too severe, it, you're in danger of putting yourself too much on the... Uh, on the stage, you know, while for me, it's, it's never about telling to the reader, look how harsh I can be, how pointy my prose can be, how mm. severe I can be. It's about trying to get the best way to communicate to the reader or the spectator about things that can excite us. Yeah, I really, I, I very much agree with you uh, in many, on, on many different levels. On one hand, well, on one hand, it's always important to me, I think, for, for, for every critic, not just, uh, sh not just share their thoughts or share their uh, intelligence, not, not to, just to share how shrewd, how intelligent they are. Oh, it's, in a way, there is some intellectual showing off, which, of which is a danger. Yeah. 
but to really ask yourself uh, and that's valid in, in any probably endeavor like why I'm doing for the sake of what I'm doing that and as, we, as you're saying what do I want to convey to the reader absolutely what do I want the reader to I mean uh, for me another thing in in terms of time is crucially important that when someone spends time with what you have written or what I have written or what the show someone has created or any, anything they pay for this kind of moments of attention which you receive yes. the most valuable currency they have in their life is their time which is irrevocable mm -hmm. so what are you giving them in return after having read this this uh, article this text having seen this what what are they get what are they get going away with that's that's so important and that's probably maybe not necessarily something incredibly philosophically profound but this should be something that 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 creates a certain change that was worth those you know 10 seconds or 15 minutes spent with it absolutely and what is the, the giveaway for you for the reader for your reader well maybe uh, it can, can be some kind of new understanding it can be this kind of uh something on the verge of surprise and oh wow i haven't I didn't think that you can look at this in that way, from that perspective. Oh, that, that, how interesting that was. Like every new facet that you can uncover thanks to what you are reading, every new kind of opening, every new connection. Also because, uh, again, maybe I'm deviating too far, but that's really extremely valuable about every person that we are a unique combination of different memories, different kind of aspects experiences. And the way they can experiences, the way they connect with each other, which kind of makes us unique in the sense of what we can give out into the world. And this should be valued. And you, you have, of course, first of all, uh, understand this about yourself and what you are capable of doing towards, towards the world in terms of this uniqueness and then kind of move on in this direction. So uh, again, I, I think I've deviated terribly <laughs> from, from your question, <laughs> but... I don't now think so. Yeah. It, it's the click when I read a, a, a comment of, of you, Angelo. The click, I agree with that. I, I feel connected with you or with a certain vision and mentality and attitude. So. It is stupid that little click means so much, you know, that, that, that you say, yes, that I'm not talking to myself, that I know that you are thinking the same and that we have a community that thinks the same, that we are not alone to be critical on what you just said and, and to all the things that are happening now. So keep on doing that because we need we need this this kind of voice in in the desert and there is a world outside there and, and i discover it for the moment and i think what what those big brands are doing for the moment is really disgusting i don't know if i and, can and say linda that. in fact one interesting thing for me is that I, the thing I like the most when I publish my stories is to get uh, feedback from readers. I mean, now you can get feedback from, from whomever because someone contacts you on social media or mm. in, in other ways. Yeah. And there is always this feeling of connection of, uh, with other people, yeah. but ne never from people within the brands. I mean, mm. I mean, you're attacking the system or showing the weak spots of the system. And there is a whole, I mean, people of all generations, super young, uh, very experienced and not super young, uh, and but never someone from the inside. Or if they are insiders, maybe it's people like you, like insiders, outsiders, because they it's already like they left the system for what it is. But, and while I think that uh, good criticism could be a very interesting voice, even within the brands, to give some kind of direction and soul to what they do and not just uh, be it a financially driven uh, enterprise. While, I agree. While big brands, I'm always surprised by how big brands only perceive criticism as an attack to their big ego, to their big uh, 
powerful presence in the system. It's never, it's very rare that they take criticism as a um, way to leverage uh, change or evolution or something. Uh, I mean, it's fun. When you, uh, I mean, uh, it happened to me many times because, as you know, I'm quite uh, outspoken in my opinions. So when you say something about a creative director who's not go- doing that well, I mean, they, they get upset, they don't invite you to the next show and things like this. And then the next season, they fired the creative director because it was not working. <laughs> so, no. And it's funny yes. because it's like, it's like when... I mean, that would have been a very interesting moment to have a, a conversation, maybe. And that exactly. in the moment that they shut the door in your face, and then they do as they please, and then they maybe they accept the criticism and go on. But it, there is never a conversation, which for me would be very important. I see. I think it's because having a conversation is a kind of art. Yes. Uh, <laughs> where you can. Uh, where it's really necessary. Uh, well, on, on one hand, you have a kind of neurotic system that has too much power over uh, the people who play this game, uh, which never helps to become not ne- neurotic. I mean, kind of just, yes. you know, the, the system itself is not built in a way that fair criticism will flourish. Just because, mm-hmm. well, I don't, I, I'm saying a banality, but if you kind of are dependent on fashion advertisers and of being yes. admitted or not admitted to a show, you will think probably twice what you are writing about because, yeah, absolutely, well, for so. obvious reasons. Uh, so this doesn't help. And then I don't know, the, the, I think to, to me, it's too, too much fear behind it, like fear of mm-hmm. this kind of open conversation or not being. Uh, f- of kind of being constantly under this kind of public radar, sometimes imaginary, and fear of being less than excellent when you maybe respond something less than intelligent or you will don't know how to how to respond. So all of this doesn't help. And then maybe there is really kind of this art of listening for understanding is also something which which is a half lost art, I think. Yes. Rather Absolutely. than waiting for you to, you know, to finish your part and shut up in order for me to, you know, to say what I'm thinking about it. And what I'm thinking in my mind, how I'm projecting in my mind of what your position is, rather than really mm-hmm. listening yeah. to your position. And, you know, and saying, oh, maybe he's not attacking, maybe he's kind of trying to help. Or yes. maybe it's better to listen to that. Yes, completely. Angelo, Angelo can poetry change the world? Absolutely, I think so. I think so. And uh, the thing for me is that poetry can change the world, but poetry is not. Uh, there is this this misunderstanding that being poetic is being uh, utterly sentimental. I don't <laughs> see that. I think it's it's more about looking at things, uh, making connection that are sometimes are a little bit uh, volatile or just uh, um, poetic. I, I, I was yeah. saying Some, something very light, like making connection that might seem very abstract, using a language. Sometimes it's, I mean, poetry is can arise feelings and maybe feelings have nothing to do with the thing that the poetry is talking about, but that feeling can bloom into something else. I mean, I believe honestly in abstraction and there is a lot of of abstraction in poetry because poetry being sometimes very uh, short and very sharp and very light it can it doesn't have an immediate connection with reality but from the in those spaces some great things can uh, arise i honestly i mean one of my dream goals as a writer is to write like a super short uh, critical uh, essays in the form of little poems but like really four or five lines just to to give an illumination to the reader and maybe start something uh, new from that i love it the idea in fact to complete what uh, anna was saying before about what she likes uh, uh, what the giveaway that she, she would like her readers to have for me it's i completely i'm completely with anna and what i like is that uh, uh I would like that a reader reading a story would not take away how sharp or how witty the criticism was, but the idea that can be another point of view, that you can look at things 
from from down up instead that from or from one side and maybe start reading a whole thing from the de the detail not the whole thing so it's just it's more a, a, um, an aspect of method of a way of looking at things it, this is also because it's the way i have been schooled through uh, throughout my academic career and then after when i started working is that everything that makes things different is how you look at them things are there and then we as writer have a point of view and a gaze onto things and it is, it's important that this gaze changes and the gaze is what you give to the reader. And then the reader will have its own gaze on things, but maybe you're just suggesting a way to use it. We have to dream again. We can dream with you. And that's what yes. we need. Yes. Anna? Yeah, it was also very word. interesting. Yes, uh, in, in this connection between criticism and poetry and going back to poetry and also going back to the fact that you, Angelo, and I are both people who have one native tongue and are writing professionally in another. Uh, I recently I, I was really ah, impressed yeah. by this uh, sharing from um, uh, Russian. I think she's a poet and a translator. Uh, and she answered the question of uh, why uh, well, sometimes you have this classic piece of poetry and you have this classic canonical translation of it into whatever language. Mm -hmm. The question is, why then other translators or other poets would try to make other translations when this best perfect translation already exists? Uh, the argument was just incredible. She says that, no, 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 this is not the translation. This is another version of the original because both the poet, who is the first author, and all the translators, let's speak about the good ones, they are kind of trying to listen as clearly as possible to the original and to transmit the original. Of course. And so, so in, in, in this sense, uh, yeah, this idea of also uh, kind of putting your ego aside, I think it's yes. very potent in poetry because you actually are not making a poem. You are listening to it and you are transmitting right. it and trying to be as clear but, as possible, as transparent as possible. In your you're just a, a vassal. You're just a vassal. You're just connecting. What it, mm -hmm. I, I make? Yes, I'm completely with you. I, I think that this putting this ego aside could be a very good step forward. Mm -hmm. Let's finish on that. I like it. And I heard so many times in your talks connecting, 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 and that's what we have to do to find a new language and step out of this kind of terrible moment uh, that fashion design and big companies are creating. So good yes. luck to you both and uh, hope Thank in you. the next Zoom we speak poetry. I would love to Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Thank Anna. you, Angelo. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Linda. It was a great Thank moment. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank Ciao. you.